Welcome to week 30 of the 52-week art journal journey. I'm Melinda, and I'm here to encourage you to reclaim your creativity and establish a healthy habit of creative self-care through art journaling. I have been having so much fun learning and experimenting in Maribeth Quinn's Introduction to Collage, Learning to Paint with Paper. If you've been following my arty journey for a while, you may know I enjoy creating small art pieces with hand-painted cut paper. Using hand-painted tissue paper adds another dimension and opens new possibilities with its translucence. And the tissue paper prep is therapeutically relaxing. I'm loving it. Including something totally new I tried. Have you ever noticed the writing that isn't writing in art? I never knew it had a name before I saw one of Maribeth's YouTube videos on creating collage paper with tissue paper. Acemic writing. And that's what we are going to play with this week. You'll need black acrylic paint and maybe some other color if you'd like to add it to the black to get an interesting dark ink color. Just make sure you keep your pseudo ink close to black so it shows up clearly after we add our watercolor. Yes, as I mentioned wanting to last week, we are getting back out the watercolors since I found out July is World Watercolor Month. You will need to use acrylic paint for your ink. You'll need a relatively soft, small, round brush. I picked up some new inexpensive watercolor brushes on sale at Hobby Lobby recently. You will also need a brush or brushes of your choice of shape and size to apply your watercolor color. Your first step is to mix a dab of black paint with some water. As mentioned, you can add another color. I used blue, but as it turned out, not enough to make it as noticeable a difference on this heavier paper. A size 8 or 9 watercolor brush worked well on tissue paper for the acemic writing in the pieces at the beginning of the video, but they are too big for our journal pages. The first I tried, a 9, well, you can see it was too blob. The 8 wasn't much better, And throughout, I struggled with a little too much ink on my brush with my first strokes. When I switched brushes again to write smaller, the first brush I tried was too uneven at the tip, so that didn't work. It looked okay when I picked it up, but yeah, no. Be sure to check the tip of your brush for any stray bristles. For slightly smaller writing, I ended up using a size 1. I was going to try the brush that came with my watercolor set, but I couldn't find it. Use what you have, find and enjoy the flow. For me, acemic writing comes easiest when I'm thinking of words, but let my hand be as jumpy or undefined as it wants. It needs strong brush strokes but also to trickle off and away from actual letters. That's the best I can explain it. You need to find what works, what flows for you. That's the key, allowing it to flow. When you get a feel for it, it's kind of addictive, like the neurographic-ish Sharpie line softening I keep doing. It's relaxing and distracting in a good way. It quiets the noise in my brain. Acemic writing is writing that has no literal meaning. It looks like there may be letters in it, but if you try to read them, you find there's nothing to read in the traditional sense. Any meaning is completely subjective. For me, it feels, in process and how it works on my brain, like a hybrid of the line making and softening I mentioned, and my words upon words. My favorite journaling slash art process, and week four, making ugly 
beautiful. I can write what I'm thinking without writing what I'm thinking. Use what's on your mind to start as a springboard for your non-letters, non-words, non-sentences. Write as much as you would like. As you can see on round two, I ended up turning the page and continuing a few times. After your writing is dry, which doesn't take long, break out the watercolors and get lost in those for a while too. This is where the difference between acrylics and watercolors is important. The acrylic paint won't bleed or run when you go over it with water. Use a flat brush if you decide you would like a stripey look like we breathed in week nine. You can check out that video at the link in the corner or in the description. And speaking of checking out things, if you are new here, welcome. If you'd like to know more about what the 52 week art journal journey is, you can check out the introductory video again at the link up in the corner or in the description. You can also check out our first prompt. Our first step on this journey was to make our journals and this journey our own. As I say every week, have fun with it. Don't think too much about the writing, just do it. And enjoy watercolor play however you're feeling it. Thanks for taking the time for creative self-care. I'm happy for you and I appreciate the opportunity to remind you that art isn't a waste of time and encourage you to exercise your creativity. It's important to your mental and emotional and spiritual health. I'll be back next week with another small art and journaling prompt. In the meantime, Enjoy expressing yourself with acemic writing and watercolor painting as creatively as you'd like. You can also check out or revisit past prompt videos. If you'd like an extra bit of weekly creative self-care encouragement in your inbox, sign up below. If you haven't yet, I'd love to have you join me on Facebook or Instagram. If you decide to share any of your small art on Instagram to encourage others to take time for creative self-care, tag me, Melinda Van Rye. I'm Melinda Van Rye Design on Facebook and use the hashtag Art Journal with Melinda. I would love to see what you are creating. If you'd like to share, be encouraged, and encourage others on this journey, and a safe, supportive community, email subscribers are invited to join the new and slowly growing Private Art Journal Journey Facebook group. If you have art to share, I would love to see you there. <music>